record. So we are recording, you guys. Today is um, July 1st, duh. <laughs> um, and it is uh, almost 10 o'clock, Saturday morning. And this is post coaching. So, um, you know, four years ago, my name is Christina Maniscalco, by the way, and you guys know me, but um, I'm an advanced director in Norfolk, Virginia. I'm originally from Long Island, New York. I moved here when I was 20. I met my husband about two years later. We've been married for almost 12 years. We have two dogs. Um, I worked at a full-time job for 10 years. Those of you that don't know, I worked at a law firm. I quit four years ago um, to do Pampered Chef full-time. Um, I found myself making just as much money as I did at my day job. I have several health issues, and I thought, self, my uh, health is way more important than my stressful day job, so I'm going to make this work. So when you do that, when you do a life-altering thing like that, like quitting your job to do a direct sales business, you have to have some things in place. And post-coaching, I believe, right here it says it, post-coaching is the lifeblood of your business, okay? Um, it's, say, the cash flow of your business. It flows through every as aspect of your thriving business. So if you want to know where your bookings and leads and sales are, look at your host coaching. Are, are your bookings where you want them to be? Are your sales where you want them to be? Are your um, recruits where you want them to be? If they're not, host coaching is probably the place that you need help with okay so if you don't have a good host coaching system um i'm going to share mine and you can take bits and pieces of it i really believe it works really well because i do all the aspects of it um i did this training a couple nights ago for uh julie's team and uh she did say it was very thorough i guess because i'm type a person so i like to be organized so this is just my system. I think it's pretty simple once you start to do it. And um, one more quick tip before I go on. There's no right time to start a new system. Just do it, okay? If you think, oh, I'll start with my fall parties. No, mm -hmm. start it now and just start integrating it now with all your new parties or even your parties you have going on, okay? So everything I and I do mean everything in your business after you book your first six parties revolves around host coaching. Okay, so I know a lot of you guys just joined. If you're in a loud place, go ahead and just meet yourself. All right, here we go. So my first question to all of you guys is, would you rather leave your house for a $50 commission check or a $200 commission check? Anybody want to raise their hand? 200 Yes, I can only see four of you. I know there's more of you out there. Um, <laughs> so have you guys ever heard the saying, host coaching is where you earn your commission and the party is where you pick up the check? Have you guys ever heard that? I did not make that up. Somebody told me that a long time ago, but it is totally true. If you are not preparing and you are not um, host coaching your host, the paycheck is not going to be there when you go to the party. The, sh the people are not going to be there. The bookings are not going to be there. And the recruits are certainly not going to be there. Okay. So what do you guys put in your host packet? These are just some examples. And I did say earlier, I'm going to share all this info with you if you don't have it already. Okay. So including this whole entire presentation, it's in a slide. So. Um, so, uh, does anybody put anything else in their um, host coach or host packet? Um, anything other than these items? Just look it over real quick and tell me if you um, put anything else in there. I started putting little goodies in there. Like this month, I have. Um, Oh, you're cutting out. Light up uh, bracelets. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. light, I heard light up bracelets. You cut out a little bit. But yeah, the little goodies are great. Um, so these are the basic items on the left here. Your host folder, or if you want to um, print out your, um, your party planner. I like to print them out off of um, Consultant's Corner on cardstock. 
and I don't really use the folders anymore. I just print these out and they are in there for cooking and virtual or catalog parties. There's two different ones. Um, three, two to three catalogs, depending on um, what you decide. The host and guest specials, or do you email those? That's okay too. Order forms, host info letter, 25 mini catalogs or postcard invitations, a join us brochure, uh, the kit credit is not on there, but a picture of the coupon. So on the top is one of my um, host packets from maybe last year. So obviously my whole system has changed over the last few years. Um, it, it's always evolving and you know switching things out and moving things in, but the basics are always there. So the top is the folder I used to use, what it used to look like, and the bottom is this new party box that I've been doing. I got the idea from Melissa Feetsum with 31, so just look her up. She has great ideas, follow her. It's Melissa Feetsum, F-E-I-T-S-A-M, I believe. Um, I think Heidi is the one that actually turned me on to her, but she has great ideas. <clears throat> Excuse me, and one of them is this party box. <clears throat> Excuse me. So um, instead of a host packet, I actually go to Michael's or wherever it is and get these photo boxes. And I have a bunch of them right now. I, well, they were at Michael's for, for $10 or something. Um, but you could put in their little goodie. It's like Colleen was saying. Um, that's like a little mini beach ball I got from um, Oriental Trading. You could do little notepads from the dollar store. You could go to the dollar store and get everything from there if you want. You could even put it in a fun pack of napkins. Um, but then the host packet's in there, so you'll see the, the catalogs, the order forms, the recipe, um, the recipe selections, the host special, um, the party planner, all that stuff. And then I actually started writing a little note um, to my host on these fun little cards. I got them from Michael's. They have great um, ice cream stuff right now. Um, and it just says, thank you so much for booking a party with me. I can't wait. Inside this party box, you will find everything you need for a successful party and more. <coughs> and I just had my office assistant write all these out. So I don't even write these out. She just does them all for me, including my um, thank you notes. She writes them all out. And then they're just ready to go. So that's in there. There's a little pen, an ice cream pen in there, and some light up um, things. So whatever you decide to put in there is up to you. Um, but it really will make you stand out. And that is the thing that you need to do. Um, and also, you, you need to kind of, you know, they have to have some skin in the game, I believe. So this really helps kind of show them like, hey, I'm serious. This is going to be super fun. Here's all this great stuff that's going to make your party a huge success. So Christina, um, can I show you something real quick that I had also? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. So I went to the Dollar Tree and I got, you know, the baskets that they have for like yeah. grilling, mm -hmm. like a little basket that, um, you know, you usually put like hot dogs in it, you know, yeah. it, it had the little checkered paper with it. Oh, so fun. So I put a little grilling card from the outlet. So I just made them up like a little, you know, oh, basket yeah. like this mm -hmm. with the, and then, um, added a grilling mate. So like all my themed parties were, you know, cause I had, you know, the indoor grill this month. So I thought it was cute to send that in my little box because I watched oh a gosh. video about the box the other day. It, it's amazing. Like, but that's the thing, like that is going to make you stand out, you know, from the rest of the direct selling world. And that's, cool. and you get four, four of them for a dollar and the papers, you know, are a dollar for the whole pack. So, I mean, it was literally really cheap way, way less than yeah. what it was for me to get the stuff at the dollar store you know uh, what i got multiple stuff <laughs> yeah i love it and you know melissa talked about like water guns they're three in a pack for a dollar so like just different but i found these little mm -hmm. fun mini party hats at like five and below they were a dollar for four little ones so just fun stuff like that so um so creating a system you guys so if you don't already have one um you should create one. <laughs> um, so now, depending on how many shows you're doing each month, hopefully, if you're wanting to promote your business or promote to the next level in your business, hopefully it's around six or eight. But this may be done over a couple days creating your system. It could be done all in one day. But whatever you decide for your system, 
create a system and stick to it. So does anybody have a system that is working for them? Um, maybe we could talk about that at the end so we don't take too much time. Um, but if you do have a system and you want to share about it at the end, I totally suggest um, sharing. We'd love to hear from you. So we're going to hold off on that until the end for right now, okay? Um, so here are some examples of just my system. Um, so instead of calling and talking to my host on the phone, I find that when I mail host letters, I send texts and Facebook messages, it's a little bit more well received. So um, I send out letters. I'm going to show you guys all examples of these in a minute. But um, the first letter goes out when they book their party. So um, last night I booked a party this morning. I'm sending out um, the host letter in a little package with their invite labels. I'll talk about that in a second too. And I found these fun little mailers on Amazon. They just say thanks so much. And then they're just really fun. I send that to my host with the first letter. Um, and actually I started putting in there a season's best because I kept forgetting to give it to them at their party. I'm such a bad person. And then I also um, got these um, bookmarks off of Merrill. Uh, they have four different recipes on Merrill. Um, that's our logo company, if you're not aware. Um, but you could order these. Um, and they have all different recipes. I got the one that have like the Santa hats too. There's four. Uh, you get like 250 of them. And then I also ordered, by the way, I think we'll talk about this later, but my magnets from there too. I was using... Um, Oh, the magnets uh, like from Amazon, they're really heavy and then you stick your own business card on them, um, but they're really heavy. The ones from Merrill are super lightweight, um, so when I stick them in something, it's not going to cause extra postage, but anywho, uh, those are Merrill things that I like to order. So anyway, the first letter goes out the day after they book their party or if they book their party not at a party. I just mail it with their packet. Okay, so that first letter goes out as soon as they book their party. Um, there's a postcard that I'm gonna share with you guys. That goes out um, three to four weeks before their party. Um, if you booked a party and it's two weeks from now, send that out the day after you send out the host letter. I just don't like to get the postcard um, mixed up with the host packet or that first letter because it could get lost. I like it to go totally separate, which is right right on the screen. Um, so that goes out. The second letter goes out, and that's just in a regular envelope two weeks before the party. Um, I have a third letter that goes out one week before the party or the week of the party. I do all my parties on Thursdays and Fridays, so normally it goes out on Monday morning. Um, and then I send texts throughout the week of the party. Okay, um, so on the left here, my friend Erin Brown and I, um, we kind of revamped the host coaching monthly tracker that's on Consultants Corner. And this is gonna be in the link that I send you. If you already have it, you'll see it in there. But we've kind of switched up the, um, the tasks at the top there, um, just to kind of go with what I do with my system. So that's my whole sheet for June and then I'll have one for July and then August and so on. I just like to have everything in one spot. So when I'm looking at it, if there are no check marks in places, I know either, oh, I have an opening for a show <laughs> or, oh, I need to send out one the text invite or whatever it is. So these are just examples. This is just examples of what I do, okay? So one of my awesome directors on my team a few years ago created um, picture red stamped of my letters. So those three letters I was talking about, she created, and I'm, I'm going to share all these with you so you don't have to recreate them. You could just take Allison's name off the bottom there. Um, but she just put what I pretty much have in my letters into a red stamp. And she just texts that. So like I said, whatever you decide, um, there's no right or wrong system. Just create one that works for you and do it. Okay? So what do we do? Um, so when do we start host coaching? So obviously we start host coaching when you book the party. So here's step one to host coaching. Make sure you um, have your host write her own information down on her date in your calendar. So I have a calendar 
uh, right here, same one that's on the screen. And I have this at every party. I have the dates that I want to book circles. And those are the only dates that they can choose from. So I always have it out on the table. And I always say, you know, if you want to book a party, you know, throughout the party, I always say this, um, you know, just take my date book, check it out, pick out a date. You'll go home with a packet, super fun. So they write their own information on their date. So you'll see um, there's all different types of writing because that's normally them. Um, and then they write on there, um, if they're not in my system already, they'll give me their name, email, address, and telephone number. So that stands for the acronym NEAT, N-E-A-T, name, email, address, telephone. Um, if they're already in my system, most of these ladies are, you could see, they just write their name and what time the date. Oh, there's a baby. Hi there. Do you want to just meet yourself? Um, awesome. Thanks. Um, so they just write their name and the time they want their party to start. Okay. So questions you can ask them as they book their party right there. I book 99% of my shows at my shows. I always believe in if you're at work, work. Nobody likes to be on the phone calling people asking for bookings, right? Um, trying to always create the new way to get a booking, right? There's no magic pill. You just have to work. So when I'm at my shows, I'm constantly promoting, um, you know, what you get when you host a party, what you receive for the host rewards, all of that stuff. So when they book their party at the show, I'm asking them, are you on Facebook? How do you know the host? Because a lot of times the party crashers are um, booking the party. So they came with a friend. So maybe they don't even know the host. Um, so do you know the host and how? Are you friends with them? Do you text? What's the best time to reach you? Maybe another question, do you work during the day? What's your work schedule like? So you're not texting them or calling them if that's what you choose to do during the times that they can't talk. Um, these are all questions that you need to know to set her up. So write down a T next to her name if she likes to use the phone for texts or if she's on Facebook, write an FB. Um, I always take my phone out right then and there and friend request them while they're in front of me. I normally hand them my phone and say, find yourself in my Facebook so I can friend request you because there's nothing worse than booking a party and telling them you're going to set them up on your show or set up their event and then you can't find them on Facebook, the worst. Um, so if the party is within two months, go ahead and give, them her give her the packet and host coach them right there. Who cares about the line? Don't worry if there's a line of people that want to order. Host coach them right there and ask them these questions and tell them what to expect in their host packet. Okay, so when you're sitting there with her, talk about these basics real quick. This takes less than a minute. So tell them that the goal is 25 orders, 15 people at the party, 10 outside orders, um, or, you know, however they're going to get to that 25. Highlight the start date, um, the start of your own business section, so on the back there. Um, explain that when you do get to 25 orders, we have to, or the way to get to 25 orders, you have to invite at least 40 people. And that's all different ways. I give my host lots of different ways to invite. I'm going to talk about that in a second. But at least 40 people because 20 will say yes, 10 to 15 will actually show up. And then you get 10 outside orders. Um, you'll always have a $1,000 party if there's 25 orders. It's a, I mean, it, it happens every time. Um, so show them the money in the numbers. Show them what they're going to get when they hit a thousand dollars. And then also talk about the kit credit. That is one of their host rewards. If you're not telling them about the kit credit, um, I always say kit credit, kit credit, kit credit. Cause that is, I probably, I probably recruit about half of my hosts, honestly, because they want the kit credit. And who cares if they just want the deal? Because nine times out of 10, they get everything and they start selling. I've had people do that on my team and they're like the number one sellers on my team. So, you know, you just never know what that kit napper, as we like to call them, will turn out to be. Uh, they could be your next director. You have no idea. So just let them do what they want to do with their kit credit and their kit. Okay. So um, don't talk them out of it either. If they're like, oh yeah, maybe so. And then you start talking about different things and then they it just let them do what they want to do. Okay. So explain the three ca uh, the catalogs. Uh, one for them to highlight everything they desire. 
normally, like I said, they're booking at the party I just met them at. So they have a catalog and circled things or highlighted things. Um, so just tell them to come through to make a huge list for their party because they're going to need to add an add-on to their kitchen by the time you're done with their show. So make sure they know. Make a huge list because that's the worst when you're going to close out a party and you're like, you still have 300 and free stuff. They're like, I don't even know what I'm going to get. Make them just have a huge want list, okay? Uh, the two other catalogs they can pass around to their friends, family, and coworkers um, to collect orders. And then I also give them a direct order link to share with their friends via email or text and obviously, it's on Facebook. There's a little bit of background noise if you guys want to meet yourself, if you're moving around or um, talking to somebody. Just go ahead and meet yourself. All right. Somebody's cooking in the kitchen. Go ahead and meet yourself. Okay, so invitations. Hold on. Invitations is a huge part of the party. Um, so I don't do this step, um, but this is a great step if you want to do it. Okay, that's why I put this in here because um, a lot of people do do this and it's very successful for them. Um, but if, okay, so let's just read it. <laughs> it's decision time on invitations. If you want to provide a service of sending the invites out, you could say to the host, I will be sending you a template that you can send me, so you can send me the addresses of all your guests. Then I need the labels back. Um, normally they ask for them back in like three days. Um, or even if the show is further out, you want to have these labels at, back ASAP. You can also tell them that you'll be setting up their page for them on your website and that you will also set up their invite uh, event on Facebook. So they have a lot of different ways to invite people. Be sure to add the guests into the show page and invite all their friends on Facebook. So right here to the right here, this is the template on Consultants Corner. If you want to um, provide that service of sending out their invites for them, there's an actual template out there. I mean, with the labels and everything gives you instructions if you want to do that. Um, you can always type invitation into this search feature on Consultants Corner, and it will bring up every single invite Pembership has out there for a theme party as well. So if you have, um, you know, a, a grilling party, you can type it in. There's something out there, like a summer party. There's all different types of templates out there if you want to actually print out a template or use the labels. So I give my hosts many options to invite. Um, here's how I set up their party on the website and I email them the host email from Pampered Shop. It shows them how to use, uh, to send e-invitations from our website. So that's the host email is right after you set up their party. The next screen is where you get their direct order link. I believe the next screen is uh, the guest list. And then the next screen is the host in uh, host whatever, whatever it says. Um, but that's where I send that email. Okay. I also create a Facebook event for them and I add the host to it as a co-host. Um, then she can add all of her friends near and far. And after I set it up, I just send them a link to their event. So they know I've set it up. Even if their party's in September, I've already set up their party. And then I put a picture that says save the date in the event. So it's already there set up. I know I've done it. It's all good. And it's there when they're ready. Uh, lastly, I mail them labels from all their, with all their party info on them to stick to the 25 mini catalogs or postcard invites I gave them when they booked their party. Um, here's all of my examples. But whatever you guys decide, you have to make sure you are doing more than just one way, okay? There's, you can't just give them a pick text and say, here's your invite. You can't just set them up on Facebook and say, here's your invite, add all your people. You can't just give them many catalogs and say, here's your invites, invite all your friends. You have to do more than at least two ways, at least. I always say you have to do all of these because <laughs> that will get different people from different areas. You'll get the older people that aren't on the computer or maybe the younger people will get the text. I mean, they have to... 
And if anything, each one will create a reminder for them because if they're getting the Facebook message and then maybe they get a text later, it's like a reminder, okay? So here are some examples of how I do mine, okay? So this is the party info label, and I, I gave this all to you in the, in the link. Um, this is for the address, uh, the labels. So it says you and a guest are invited to a super fun cooking party at Trisha's Tuesday, August 22nd at 6.30. There's her address. And then my website, okay? And I print out um, 3, 6, 30. Actually, I print out 24, and the bottom three are um, host uh, labels. So it's just the host information, so that's her address. So what I do with those six labels at the bottom is I put it on all my mailings that I mail to her. So if I booked the party last night, let's just say, um, I have all those six labels. So the first label would go on the package. I'm sending letter number one in. So right there. Um, if they did not book at a party and I'm sending them, them their um, party box or their host packet, that's where their first, first label would go. Uh, the second label would go on to the postcard that I talked about earlier. So that's already ready. Uh, the third and fourth label go on the two letters that are going to go out two weeks before and one week before. Um, so uh, you'll see up in the top right corner. Um, and then the bottom one is for the handwritten thank you note. So after the party. So on my desk, I have all of my postcards to go out for the rest of the summer to all of my hosts. So they go out three to four weeks before the party. Um, I have all of my envelopes, letter two, all in a stack, and they're all in date order. So every Monday morning, I just take the next two, and I mail them out. Same thing with letter number three, and same thing with my thank you notes. They're all right here, just the envelope, ready to go out, okay? You guys, this is a system. It's going to keep you super organized, and it's going to be super helpful when you have a full party calendar. Um, there's another label, just a random label. I was sending happy mail before um, I started doing those host boxes. So um, I still do that extra label. And this is just a little bit of happy mail for my host um, that did not get the party box. And here is just like one of those ice cream pens, a little postcard that I made up, and then just the ice cream, the new summer product flyer. And I just mail that to them like, um, maybe around the same time or maybe the week before I send out the postcard. Okay, so about a month before they get, they were getting a little happy mail, but now it's in their host packet, so, or their host box. All right. You can also use um, apps like Red Stamp, Pit Collage, um, Canva, all different types of apps to create an invite, just like this. So, um, and these are just some examples of the ones that I have used. Um, I just changed mine up. I just created a new one with um, a red stamp. I just put different pictures in it. You can do whatever you want. Uh, the one in the top right corner is um, pick collage. The rest are red stamp. So what I do with this, um, I text it to them. So in the bottom right corner, that's the text. So that's the picture. And underneath I wrote, here is a text you can use as a reminder to help invite your friends. Okay, and they sometimes post that on Facebook. I mean, it just depends on where they want to put it. Sometimes they use it as an email. Um, they do all different stuff with it. All right, so the business opportunity is a part of post coaching. So most people have to hear something four or five times before they really hear it. It's actually a proven study, so this especially applies when talking about our amazing, amazing business opportunity. So when do you guys talk to your host about the business opportunity? Anybody want to share? Okay. Can you hear me, Christina? Now I can. <laughs> uh, well, I was on me. This is Heidi. Um, I personally share it for the first time while she's at the party, um, yeah. whether she's booked a party or not, but if I'm handing her that host packet, I share it right then. Like, 
you know, we can make this your grand opening party, that kind of thing to go ahead and plant that seed. Absolutely. Anybody else? I was just scrolling through all the photos. Hi, everyone. Hey, Erin. I see you driving. <laughs> Hi, everybody. This is so fun. Hi, Ro. What's going on, girl? All right. So these are all the different ways or times that you should be talking about the opportunity. Um, so like Heidi said, when they book a couple days before the party, while closing the party, party, when you call them or text them for the first time, um, after the party, when you're explaining all the rewards, because there's five rewards, five things your host gets. Um, they get free stuff, half price items, discounted stuff. They get the host special and they get the kit credit. So if you're not offering that fifth one, you're totally not offering all the host rewards that Pembership has to offer. Um, so that is like your way to break the ice <laughs> about the kit credit, because that's a reward. So you say to them, oh my gosh, have you ever thought about doing something like this? You're already on my calendar. I'd love to turn this into a brand opening party or a kickoff party. If you wanna just try it out, we could sign you up a week before the party. Or like, let's just say, you know, tell me, they say, tell me more about that or whatever. You could say, oh, you know, we could sign you up a week before your party. Your party will be your kickoff or grand opening party. You'll get all the host rewards. You'll get all the, you'll get the paycheck and you'll get all the bookings. And I'm there to help you out. If they're already on your calendar, why not? Um, or you can tell them it's like a try me party. Or you could try out the party. I could come do the party, obviously, like I was going to. And then you could use the kick credit after the party. Some of your free products, um, you can just use those. Or, sorry, some of your free money, you can use that towards your kick credit, um, towards your kit. So that's just a great way to kind of get that out there and tell them that that's an option. Does anybody already do that? I know a few of you do. Oh, there's messages. Hold on. Erin, every time I talk to them, Rose said, I am the best. <laughs> try me party? Yes, try me party. It's okay, Tracy. I love it. Yes, Tracy said she needs to offer the opportunity more. It's okay. You know, um, almost nine years into the business, we forget about the basics, right? Sometimes we just have to be reminded, and that's okay. All right. So are you guys. So was hey Christina? I hey, think she wanted you to explain what a try me party is. Oh, what that means? Yeah. So it's it's kind of like what I just said. So when you oh gosh oh god go back hold on how do I go back don't go oh oh yay I went back yay. I'm special. Uh, try me party is, um, you know, they could try it out. So you would go and do the party and they could, or there's two different ways you can do it. So they could sign up um, before the party and you go and help them and they try it out. Uh, they get all the bookings and if they don't like it, that's fine. They totally get their money back in commissions for their party and they get all the host rewards. Um, and then the other way a try me party could work is, you know, you go and do it, you give them all the bookings, um, and they get the host rewards, and then they can use the kick credit. Does anybody else do a try me party different or explain it different? That's kind of how I always explain it. I tell them um, to take a look at their wish list mm -hmm. and take a look at the kits, mm -hmm. and that. Um, Basically, everything that they're going to want is in that kit, so it's a no-brainer. I always use that term. It's a no-brainer to go ahead and turn your party that you already have on the books with me into a try-me party. You have nothing to lose, and so that's what I say when they book the party, and then that really gets them thinking, and then I just follow up every time I talk to them about the party, and 95% of my hosts sign up and join my team before their party actually starts. Yay. Those are some, I mean, it's the kit credit and this whole try me and grand opening party and all these other, like that is your way to get more recruits out of your month. Honestly, like if you're not recruiting your host, that's your number one potential recruit. 
every, every week. If you're doing two parties a week, you could potentially have at least one host a week. I mean, one new recording. I like your ringtone, whoever that is. It's not me. <laughs> I know who it is. I don't want to mute you. I'll mute you. Okay, sorry. I muted you. Okay, anybody re uh, overwhelmed? Let's recap. What we have just discussed is probably the most crucial in your host coaching process because it gets them excited and thinking about their wish list, who they want to invite, what excites them about the party, and if they want to be a consultant of their party, want to be the consultant of their party and earn all of the free and discounts plus a paycheck. So, so far you have handed out the packet or mailed it, went over it with the host and set up expectations. You set her up on your website. You've emailed her the email from Consultants Corner. You set her up on Facebook. You gave her at least three ways to invite her friends and you invited her to join your team. So anybody have any questions so far? I'm gonna, I have some more stuff, but I just wanna make sure. Everybody good so far? Yep. Super. Okay, so this is what I do the week of the party. Okay, so the week of the party, you can call them to finalize numbers and to check if they need anything else from you. Um, if they have any questions, you've offered them, if you've offered them an extra item, um, if they have a certain amount of sales prior to the show, you could do that. You could offer them an extra item. Um, you could say, you know, you're going to get a free something um, if you have $250 in outside orders before I show up. Or I like to do, if you have 12 RSVP'd, I'm going to make a chocolate lava cake. It's three ingredients. I go to the store one time a month, get 10 boxes of cake mix, 10 icings, and a, a, a case of soda. I normally do Sprite Zero or 7-Up Zero, whatever it's called. Um, and I normally, I'm talking to the cashier because I have all of these cake mixes and icings and they always say, are you a baker? <laughs> I'm like, no, I sell Pampered Chef. Have you ever heard of it? And you know, that whole thing happens every single time. So I always go to a different grocery store when I go and buy my cake mix, by the way. Um, so for the cake mix or for the chocolate lava cake in the, tr in the rock crock or the large serving bowl, just mix up your cake mix and the soda, that's it. Mix up until it looks like batter dollop the icing on top, all of it, put it in the microwave for 10 minutes without or with the lid, whatever you decide. And um, it's, it's amazing. So I actually created a little flyer. Um, this is just a little postcard that says ice cream, you scream, we all scream for ice cream. It's just another way to kind of get them excited about the new ice cream maker. And if they have 12 people, uh, we can make ice cream at their party. Um, I don't buy the ingredients for that, they do. And I've been doing the recipe that's just the 12 ounce can of sweetened condensed milk, two cups of heavy whipping cream, and a splash of vanilla, that's it. And honestly, the last two parties, it's whipped up really nice. So I've been doing that recipe, it works really good. Um, but this is, this if, you, if they don't have 12, like let's say they say they have 10, you know, and they're like, can we still do ice cream and cake? And I'm like, sure, you know, I'm not going to say no. Some people are sticklers for it. I'm not. I'm still going to sell a ton of rock crocs because they're seeing that cake done or that bowl because they're seeing the cake done. And then, of course, the ice cream maker. It's amazing. So just different ways to help your host get to the, the level or the amount of people or sales that you want. Um, because we all know when they have at least 12 people at their party, you're going to get the bookings you need and the recruits that you want from your party. Somebody a long time ago shared with me, um, there's always at least one recruit at each party or at least two recruits at every party, but is there a recruiter? So are you asking everyone if they want to join your team or if, they ever, if they've ever thought about doing something like this? Um, so it's just, you're not going to get there if you don't have the, the people at the party. So you have to kind of get creative and make sure you're inviting and all that stuff. So this picture on the right is something I send to my host. It's a picture. Um, I send it to them about two days before the party and I just text them. I'll say, hey, here's a really fun reminder uh, text picture if you want to post it on Facebook or you want to text it out to all your friends the morning of your party. And then they just, they love it. And they're like, oh my gosh, so fun. And then they text it to everyone. 
Okay, also the week of the party, I use Post My Party and I have a countdown in every single party that I do. Um, seven days, six days, five days, four days, all the way down to one. Um, and the picture with the number shows up, and I gave you all these pictures, don't worry. Um, the picture with the number shows up in the event the morning of the, or at 8 a.m. And then at 8 p.m., there's some kind of recipe or video or something about a product um, until their party. So like, let's just say day seven, the picture in the morning. In the evening, it says, wow, check out our new summer product line available June 1st. And there's a video from Camper Chef's YouTube account um, of all of the new summer products. Okay, and then day six, same thing, and then there's um, recipes. Um, and then after the party is over, um, like there's a link, there's one of them is uh, to go and join my VIP group. And then the link. Um, another post could be after the party, oh my gosh, did you miss the party? Um, there's still time to order and, you know, give them the link. Um, there's a post about joining the team, you know, did you miss it? Did you want to, uh, have you ever thought about joining Pamper Chef? And like a picture of the kits. Um, there's another one of um, hosting. So have you ever thought about hosting a party and like there's like a picture from home office that has like the margarita or something like for a a Mexican fiesta party. Okay, so these are some examples. Um, there's the VIP picture. Um, there's still time. You're invited. Um, the the kits, and then I also post my um, Evernote link on the party the day after the party. All the recipes that I'm doing this summer. So um, that one link has all the recipes I am doing. Um, no matter what recipe option they choose. So they get that recipe plus all the other ones. So it's one easy quick link, I could just post it. It's all about the host. So after the party, after the show is over, before you leave, you wanna sit down or talk to your host about um, what level she's at. Make sure she knows where she's at and what she could get at the next three levels. So if she's at 600, you want to tell her what she's going to get at seven, eight, and even $900 in sales. So no matter what kind of party you just had, you are smiling, you are gracious, and you're appreciative, even if the party was 80 bucks, okay? Um, always help her make a list of everyone who did not come or who, who could not make it. Maybe there was a rainstorm and nobody could make it. It's not her fault, you know? Um, so just be super gracious about it. Um, make a list with her of everyone who couldn't come um, while it's still fresh in her mind. And then set a target date to close out the party. I normally close out my parties on Monday nights. Um, so just set that date with them and put it in your calendar. So like I use my phone for every, if it's not on my phone calendar, I forget to do it. So I put it right in there. Okay, Monday 8, 8, 8 p.m., <laughs> I'm gonna call Susie to close out her party. And she sees me doing that, so she knows Monday at 8 p.m. she's gonna have her stuff ready. Um, I per So I personally close out all my parties on Monday. Um, then immediately after the party, I change the end date of the Facebook event to reflect the closing date of the party so everyone can still see the event until then. Um, you can continue to make posts on the Facebook event um, wall to remind them to put their order in two days, two more days, one more day, last day to order um, kind of post. This can help you get even more sales, your host, even more benefits. It's all about the host. Um, that's a really good point because, you know, I've had $80 parties. I mean, we all have. Um, sometimes we, don't, we, don't, we have parties with no sales, but then all the outside orders can make it a $1,000 party. You just never know. Um, also, be sure to keep um, them up to date on what level they're at as the orders come in. So here's a picture I put, or I sent to my host, this was a couple weeks ago, but um, that was her, her show sales, good morning, after Diane's order, and then she sees her total, and then she said she has somebody else that wants to order. So keep her informed. You're only 40 or $55 away, $45 away from the next level. Who else has to order, you know? Chris, Christina, it's Heidi, can I ask a question? Yes. Okay. When you said that you change your party date on Facebook immediately after the party, 
in the event. Is there a reason you don't do that immediately? Like when you set the event up, is there a reason that you don't have a start date of the night of the party and an end date already out? Yeah. So, um, like for virtual parties, it really has to do with virtual parties because sometimes when you set it up, like people for a virtual party will really see that end date as the last date to order. I see. Um, so then you have to go in and kind of extend it if um, maybe she's not done. And that also, um, you have to do that in uh, consultant's corner. Like a lot of times for virtual parties, like let's say you're doing a 12 day party, you set it up for this day, it ends this day. Well, then the host has to order. So if she's going into place her order and it closes the day before, technically her, her host rewards and stuff, cart that cart isn't going to pop up for her to see it. Yeah, I get that for virtual parties and on Consultants Corner, but on the Facebook event that you set up for your home parties, are you also setting that in, changing that end date? Normally I set, like if it's a, a cooking party, um, it normally has like a few extra days. Okay. All right. I get it now. I just, I didn't, Sorry. wasn't, I, was I, I set it up that way to begin with. Yeah. So I, I was just wondering why you set it, why you set it up, why you changed it the day of the party instead of just setting it up that way originally. Yeah. It's really for virtual. Um, okay. That I makes more sense now. I thought that was for home parties. Gotcha. Yeah, no, and a lot of these things you guys can use for virtual. I've had a lot of questions about that. Um, it's the same way. You still have to host coach your virtual host. Yeah. You know, you could still send them a packet. You could still send them invites. You could, you know, all of these things you do for a virtual host. Maybe it's over at Messenger or maybe you call them, you know, whatever you decide. But you still have to kind of follow the same kind of steps for a virtual host as well. Um, so these are all um, thank yous for friends that place outside orders. Um, these are just examples. So you want to make sure you're, you know, thanking everyone. People love to see their name in lights. <laughs> As consultants, we all know that. Um, so you can get super creative with things like Snapchat or Pic Collage or uh, Red Stamp. Uh, there's an app called Retype. Um, and then of course, Pampers Chef has tons of thank you pictures. I don't know if you guys know. Um, and then also Bitmoji, that's really fun. You can do those thank you and you rock pictures. My favorite ones at the bottom, I love ordering things online because when I, when they arrive, it's like a present from me to me. I got that from a jewelry lady. I was on a party. Um, it was fun. Okay. Remember, it's all about the host. The day after the party, you want to make sure you send them a handwritten thank you note. Thanks to Erin. My office assistant is now writing all of my notes for me. <laughs> this one's actually my handwriting, but this is hers right here. She writes all my notes for me because her host doesn't know. <laughs> um, and it's less work for you. So a handwritten thank you note. Um, I include a recipe card. It's just fun. And the magnet. Um, if you don't put your magnet in the host packet, you could put it in the thank you note. Sometimes I like to keep things separate from that host packet because there's so much stuff in there. I don't want it to get lost. So I just think this is a really fun way to say thank you. Okay, different ways to close the party. Um, I don't know if you guys know, there's these pictures that are all over Facebook um, from the virtual um, group. Uh, I use the one on the right a lot, um, how to place your host order. Um, it's a great way. Um, Shelly wants to know if I keep all my handwritten notes generic, meaning you don't add their name. You can just, yes, exactly, Shelly. They all say the same thing. I could go back real quick. Hold on. Oh, geez. There we go. Yeah, they pretty much, and I got this verbiage from Erin. It might be a little different, um, but thank you for choosing me to party with. I had so much fun with you and all of your guests. Um, don't forget you get 10% off for the entire year, or sometimes I've been writing the next 12 months. Um, I look forward to partying with you again. This could be a thank you note for a virtual host or a cooking show host, okay? There was one more question. Hold on. Um, yeah. Okay, cool. I think I got it all. Okay. So, um, these are different ways. I actually text this picture or if I'll Facebook message these pic picture on the right to my host and they place their order themselves. You guys, it's so 
it's so simple. Like they just have to create an account if they haven't already. They log into my website. They'll see their host cart. They shop. It tells them their host rewards. They pick them out. It's so easy. They submit it and you get an email. It's like a happy host email when they're done. And then you go in and you, um, you submit it. And normally I'll just send them a message that says something like, um, Oh my gosh, great pics. I love it. Look how much you saved. I'll also send them that email from Consultants Corner again. Remember that uh, when you set them, set them up, you send them that email. Well, there's also a closing email you could send them after you've closed their party out. It tells them how much they saved and all that stuff. I and mean, then what to expect when their order arrives. Uh, this is a, um, my email that I send to all my guests. Um, this is also in the link that I sent you guys or you have. Um, I do this every two weeks and I just BCC all of my guests in the whole two weeks. I don't do this every time after every party. Um, so they don't see who's getting it. And then I also send it to the host too, but it's just some basic, um, information for the guests, um, including the recipes that we made. So, um, there's just basic info. You can check that out after. And then down at the bottom, I do, um, include the, the next two months host specials. Uh, closing the party, uh, you send the thank you email. Like, it's, oh yeah, so there it is. The email host, and then you just click the email after sh after show option. Excuse me, um, and that sends them that email. Uh, the host does the host email. And the other thing I do is I go into the guest list and I select all the guests and I add them to my contact list. And then once a month, I add all of my contacts to my newsletter list. I don't know if you guys do that or not. Um, but that's another step I kind of take. Um, and then the day the order has shipped, uh, we get an email. So I just send them a quick picture like this. Um, and they, I just tell them to expect their order within the next couple days. And it's really fun. They get so excited. Um, these are some results that I've had since I've started this system. Um, before implementing the system, my show average in 2013 was around 575, which is like the company average. Um, and this year so far, my average has been between nine and eleven hundred dollars. So um, this system, I know it's very, um, it seems like a lot, but it's not once you get it started and you start rolling with it. Um, and then the other thing I need to add to this is that my um, cancellations, nobody cancels on me. I have not, I don't get cancellations anymore unless somebody has passed away in their family. Literally, like life changing things, obviously, you can't, um, you know, you, that stuff like that happens, obviously. Um, but, you know, I don't get cancellations because they're invested in this process. They're getting letters, they're getting exciting messages, their events set up. They've added people to their event on Facebook. It's hard for them to cancel a party once they've added people to an event on Facebook. I'm just saying. Um, so they've got a lot invested. So once you do all these things, they're inviting people. It's going to happen whether they like it or not. Um, it's very hard to cancel. So um, that's just a couple things. For more information, you can go to Consultants Corner, go to Training Resources. Under Director Bound, there's Consultant Resources, or you can go to PC you and go to um, host coaching. Um, these are some call to actions if you guys like. Um, check out all the different systems. Um, practice what you'll say to the host. Make a 24-hour call with every host on your calendar and continue to make 24-hour calls from now on, which 24 hours, you know, just calling them right after they book their party, right after they close their party, all of those, those things. And if you don't call, message them, text them, you know, all the different ways we talked about keeping in contact. Um, these are just some things from the Director Bound program, but making 15 contacts a week outside the party uh, will keep your business going. And then there's some great um, information on uh, Director Bound and consultants corner so some inspiration michael jordan he's the greatest player ever to play the game of basketball of course this impossible this is impossible with a born talent this is impossible with a born talent you guys it's been a long morning but it isn't sufficient jordan was also the hardest working hardest worker with an impressive perfectionist um, attitude. He was he was a perfectionist who kept on improving his game. What what has triggered him to work harder than anyone else? Which sparkle gave him the determination to be the best? 
Well, there's an interesting story about Michael Jordan described in a book about him called Michael Jordan, A Life Above the Rim. As a freshman in high school, Jordan played his basketball team on his basketball team in varsity. One year after joining the team, he was cut from the basketball team. But this only pushed him to work harder at perfecting his game. As he later described in his biography, I think that not making the varsity team drove me to really work at my game and also taught me that if, I, if you set goals and you work hard to achieve them, the hard work pays off. I knew I, own, I, knew I never would wanted to feel that bad again. I knew exactly where I wanted to go and I focused on getting there. As I reached those goals, they built on one another. I gained a little confidence every time I came through. I really believe that this event triggered Michael Jordan to become the best player ever. Without being cut from his high school team, I don't think we would be discussing Jordan 15 years later after his basketball career. So the whole, the whole point of this inspirational story is no matter where you are in your business, um, this can start today. You can restart your business every single day and, you know, don't give up. Even if you're in a low place in your business right now, I'm not saying all, any of you are, but if you are, don't give up. <laughs> um, you know, things, life happens, things happen, but all you can do is persevere and make yourself better. So never, never, ever, ever, ever give up. Host coaching takes practice. Give it some time. Do it for a hope for every single host and watch your business soar. So just a couple pictures. The only person you should be better than is the person you were yesterday. True story. I'll cry about that one later. Uh, and never compare your beginning to someone else's middle. So some of us have been in the business 5, 10, 21 years. Um, you can't compare your beginning to somebody else's middle because Maybe they're just wiser in their business because they've been around a while. Just learn from them. Um, but don't compare yourself to them because you're not in the same place. If you're brand new two, two weeks in, you know, you just, you just never know what could happen. Okay, so what questions do you guys have? Wow, look at all you guys. This is fun. Anybody have any questions? <sighs> Christina, thank you for doing this. Oh, you're so welcome. It was very helpful. Very. I'm glad. Yay. All right, is anybody going to revamp their host coaching system? Anybody excited? Yes. I see a lot of hands. <laughs> you know, it, it's true, though. Um, okay, hold on. There's questions. Um... How do you explain to your guests that you only book Thursday and Friday? What wording do you use? Oh, I love that question. Okay, so at the beginning of the party, I actually share a little bit about me, uh, why I joined Pam Birdshoff, um, and why I stay with Pam Birdshoff, and I explain right then and there, hey, I've been in the Pam Birdshoff for nine, almost nine years, and I love, love, love my job because I make my own schedule. It's amazing. I work every Thursday and Friday night, and I get to have the weekends with my husband and family. So if anybody's interested in hosting a party tonight, go ahead and check out my date book right here. You'll see all the dates I'm available and just pick one of those that are circled. That's all I say and they don't ever like give me any kind of slack. Um, if you do have people that only want to do the weekends, I personally don't like to do weekends. Some people love to do the weekends, but I don't. Um, I live in like a, a beach town kind of, so people scatter on the weekend and attendance just isn't very high. Maybe that's an excuse I keep telling myself because I don't want to do weekend parties. So take it wherever you will. Um, but I will say when I worked full time, I did parties through uh, Wednesday. No, let me start over. When I worked full time, I did parties on Friday night and Saturday morning. And I did get a lot of slack from people on Saturday mornings because there was sports and all that stuff. Um, but brunch parties were fun. Um, but I just, I would just tell them uh, weekend parties, everybody's at a wedding or a birthday party or out of the park or the pool or the beach or going on vacation. So your attendance, I believe, is a lot higher during the week. That's what I say. Does anybody else say anything different? 
I only do parties on Mondays, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays are the days that I offer. And I don't really have anybody question me. If you are confident and that is your schedule, then that is what they're going to book. So you don't say, well, I, yeah, you have to say, okay, you guys. So I, and I have my party dates actually written out on the booking bags. So that's a whole nother training. Yeah. So they're only looking at the dates I'm giving them anyway. So they don't even question do you party on the weekends? And if they do, I just say, no, I don't, you know, I have a life too. And we do things on the weekends. So I only do Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday. And I've never had anybody not book with me. Yeah. And you know, if somebody really gives me a lot of pushback about a weekend, I always say, oh my gosh, I have this amazing team. I will totally give you, give you their number. And you, I mean, they, they may be available for you on a Saturday. And you know, nine times out of 10, they're like, I really want to do a party with you. Well, then there you have it. <laughs> My next available date is August 30th. <laughs> like, you know, you just tell them. Um, but the booking bag, Erin, that's a really good, you know, this is about host coaching and bookings go along with that. So the booking bag is just a gift bag. Make a, a, a sign that goes on it that says, um, pick a date, pick a prize inside the bag are like items under $10. And, um, if they put, um, and on the outside of the bag, there's post-its with the dates you're available and they pick those dates off and they pick a prize out of the bag. Really. It's really awesome. So my booking bags are a little different. I don't give prizes in my booking bags. I, love I actually just have the bag with tissue paper. It's empty. It's a small bag and has a post-it with my date on it. And when they bring me the bag, I give them a host packet. And then I reward my current host when she gets three bookings. Once the third booking holds, she gets $30 in free product from me. So they're helping their friend out. So that's how I do my booking bags. I love it. And some of the prizes people give, I know a lot of you are asked, like, going to wonder. Um, I think they're the stainless steel mixing bowls, right? Is that what you do, Erin? Sorry, we're driving, so I'm muting, unmuting. Um, it's actually just, I give them $30 in free product of their choice because that's something easy for me to remember and I can be consistent about the offering of it. Yeah, no, that's good. I think Michael Reeves or somebody else came up with that stainless steel mixing bowl set or somebody did. Um, but after, but it's after the third booking holds they um give them which they and i think he said he's given like maybe one set away <laughs> out of like the whole time he's been using it so it's a great idea okay anybody else okay well i thank you guys um i think we're all done thank you guys so much i need to figure out how to turn off my recording oh there it is down there okay i'm gonna stop the recording